We're back. It's 8-12. We're in the presence of royalty. Queen Rania El Abdullah of Jordan. She is right here in New York along with her husband, King Abdullah II, for the UN General Assembly. We're going to talk to her about her work, some milestones for her family in just a moment. But first, a little more on Her Majesty. We have to act in the service of future generations because what we do today is about tomorrow, too. An influential voice on the world stage, Queen Rania Al Abdullah of Jordan, is a powerful advocate for causes close to her heart. If we stick together, we can make fixing the climate the greatest project and greatest achievement of our lifetimes. A champion of the environment, Her Majesty serves as a council member for the Earthshot Prize founded by Britain's Prince William. The Queen is also focused on helping the world's refugees, asking for compassion during a keynote speech in London last week. When we demonize people for seeking a better life for their families, we normalize their suffering. For decades, her royal role and humanitarian work have led Queen Rania to meet with foreign leaders and speak at summits. Last September, Her Majesty joined King Abdullah in London for the funeral of Queen Elizabeth. They returned months later for the coronation of King Charles. It was 24 years ago at the age of 28 when Her Majesty received the title of Queen. This past June, she celebrated 30 years of marriage with King Abdullah shortly after hosting not one, but two elaborate royal weddings that captured the world's attention. Their eldest daughter, Princess Iman, married first in a march ceremony. Queen Rania writing on Instagram, I pray this next chapter in your life brings you as much joy, love, and laughter as you have brought us over the years. The country then celebrated the heir to the throne, Crown Prince Hussein, as he married his bride, Rajwa, an architect from Saudi Arabia. First Lady Dr. Jill Biden, Prince William, and Princess Kate were among the 1,700 guests. And if that weren't enough, the king and queen also had the graduation of their daughter, Princess Salma, from the University of Southern California, and their youngest son, Prince Hashem, from high school. Queen Rania posting, guys, can we slow down a bit? This mom needs to catch her breath. Oh, Queen Rania, Your Majesty, good morning, good morning. I want to get to all of that in just a second because a lot of that we're watching and we think, wow, she's just like us. <laughs> we have those same feelings. But let's talk about the UN first. Um, you, you know, I feel like the world is in such a dark place right now. Mm -hmm. And I've heard you give speeches and I feel that there is light there. Mm -hmm. Where do you see, where, where do you find that hope and how do you convey it? Well, you know, you're right. I think our world is at an inflection point, you know, and it seems like polarization is is really a defining feature of our world. You know, mm -hmm. whenever we see somebody who disagree, disagrees with us, it's become natural to demonize them. Yeah. And when you see everything through a political lens, it becomes very difficult to come together over any issue. Mm -hmm. And the irony is that the issues that we're facing today, from climate change to migration to inequality, those all need solutions that come from collaboration. So if we're not talking to one another. You know, we're not going to be able to um, to find resolution to some of these issues. And I, and I just feel like we need more engagement that is rooted in optimism and hope yeah. rather than, you know, fear. And, you know, there's, there's this wave of populism around the world that's using people's fears and insecurities for leaders to gain popularity, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's not finding, that's not very helpful. It's not finding solutions. So I think we need to focus more not on the why, for example, mm -hmm. when it comes to climate change, but on the how. Mm -hmm. How do we find so solutions? At the COGEX, you gave, you gave a beautiful speech and you talked about how you used to think that strong leaders were tough and led from the front of the ship. Mm -hmm. But as you've grown, you realize that leaders, great leaders, actually lead from the back of the ship. They're behind. They're watching how things unfold. And in your opinion, those are the kind of leaders who I think get to be a strong leader, you need to follow, yeah. you know, follow the great movements that actually lead to people's engagement and lead to participation that leads to change. You have to have some self-doubt. What we're seeing today yeah. is so much, I know what I, I called it, you know, certainty on ster steroids, where yeah. you're not questioning yourself and you think that your opinion is right. I think we could all benefit when confronted with an opinion that differs from ours. 
in just maybe replacing defensiveness with curiosity yeah. because you could learn something new and it doesn't mean you have to agree with the other side but you can try to find a little bit of a middle ground and and the really the, the frightening thing in our world today is that middle ground seems to be disappearing lo- yeah, we need lost. to regain that middle ground because that is where change is going to happen and you're optimistic that that can that can I think happen. optimism is a, is a choice I don't know if you remember this but you've been here on this show many times mm-hmm. There was one time in particular that you came on when your youngest was four months old. True. Yes. Uh, I think we have a little video. This is now 18-year-old Hashim. He just graduated from high school. When you look at those images of him as that little boy and to see what he's become. It's just scary how time flies, <laughs> yeah. right? I mean, I mean, you know, as parents, I think it's our, our job to you know, take care of our kids until they are old enough to go out into the world. But it doesn't make it easy when that day comes, actually. And, you know, in the span of three months, from the end of March to the beginning of June, I had two children get married and two graduate. Oh, gosh. I mean, you're I mean, about what, to be an empty nester. What was nest- I thinking? <laughs> you're, so you're an empty nester, so to speak? I'm an empty nester right now, you know, and it, it's... Uh, but, you know, it's just this wave of emotions, you know, with Iman when mm-hmm. she, it was a new experience for our family because she's the first one to get married. And mm-hmm. there were so much, so much planning and anticipation culminated in a really beautiful and emotional day. Nothing can prepare you for the moment you see your daughter in that white dress. Oh. You know, the mixture of emotions of, you know, pride at the strong and independent woman she's become, joy for her joy, sadness for her leaving home. Mm. You know, it's, it all comes together and nothing can prepare you for that. Well, just to brag on your kids a little bit, uh, Crown Prince Hussein went to Georgetown in the Royal Military Academy in England. Princess Iman started in Georgetown, then transferred to New York's Parsons School of Design. Princess Salma graduated from USC, yes. and now your your son is off to college. Yeah. You did good by all your kids. Can I ask one thing? One thing that we wrestle with here when it comes to our kids, mm-hmm. kids and cell phones. I know this is off topic, but mm-hmm. what 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 is what's that like in your house? Is that something that you don't like to have around your kids being on Look, their phones? I don't think you can completely fight the trend because that's where children are. I mean, that's where the world is. Technology is all around us. You can't find it completely, but you need to regulate it. Yeah. And I think it's more about the values that you instill in your kids you know, uh, about themselves, the yeah. self-confidence, the, 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 the discipline, all those uh-huh. things are important and that will determine how they interact with their technology. Uh-huh. Um, I mean, one of the first things when, um, just before my son announced his engagement, I took Rajwa to a side and the first thing I told her was, you know, there's no such thing as a 100% approval rating. You're yeah. always going to have people that are against you. And the advice that I want to give you is please try not to read the comments. Yeah. You know, because that's just going to, you're just going to have self-doubt. You're yeah. just going to, and when, when you, there's always going to be negativity. And that negativity is coming, not, it's not about you. It's from the person, they're unhappy in their yeah. own lives. So don't carry that unhappiness. Just keep focusing on what it is you want to do because... It'll shake your confidence. You, you think it's not going to affect your morale, but it does, it does. you know. And, and so you just need to develop healthy habits around technology. And, and that's what you try to teach your kids, not to stay away necessarily from their phones, but to interact with them in a, in a healthier way and to always establish that balance. Well, you've done so well by your children and also just by just the way you're navigating your way through the world and how you're helping everyone. I just want to say thank you. It's been in my honor to sit with you, uh, Queen Rania. It's thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.